Mark Driscoll is the pastor of a mega church in Seattle, Washington named Mars Hill. He's got about 10,000 people going to his church. He writes very popular books. He's got about 15 to 20 of them, and he's one of the most influential pastors in the United States. And Mark Driscoll has a message for you, and that message is this. Some of you, God hates you. Ouch. I would like to explore Mark Driscoll with you with some seriousness because our theology matters. If we think that the ultimate ground of existence that is God, if we think that God hates people, that matters to our world view. And if we are to walk in the ways of God, then we are to hate people too. This is how serious this issue is. It matters. These sermon clips come out of a sermon that Driscoll preached called Jesus Sweats Blood. And um, I'll link to it below so that if you want to read it, uh, you can. Driscoll's point is that every time that we sin, we fill God's cup of wrath. And in this clip that I'm going to show you, he talks about how many people don't want to talk about God's wrath. It's the wrath of God. And immediately some of you would say, no, 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 the love of God. Pastor Mark, preach the love of God. No, the wrath of God. Do you know the wrath of God is mentioned more than the love of God in the Bible? Do you know that the wrath of God is mentioned with 20-some words, Old and New Testament combined, over 600 times? So I get uncomfortable when pastors do word studies like this because there are not 20 words in the Bible that mean wrath. If you look at a concordance, which is a book that has a list of words and how many times and where those words are used in the Bible, you will see that the word wrath is used about 170 times in the Bible. If you want to add anger to that, it's about 210 times. So if you put wrath and anger together, it comes up with about 380 times in the Bible. Now if you compare that with the word love, love is used about 600 times in the Bible. So the weight of wrath and anger and the weight of love clearly moves towards love in the Bible. So I don't know how he's getting this count. In the next clip that I'm going to show you, Driscoll talks about how God is love, but love is not God. It's actually a very good point that I agree with, and we'll talk more about it after the clip. Isn't God loving? Yeah, 1 John 4, God is love, God is love. But love is not God, and God is not only love. When it speaks of God in the Bible, it speaks of Him in terms of attributes. He is loving and just. He is merciful and holy. He is forgiving and righteous. And what people like to do is take one of God's attributes, elevate it above the rest, and or ignore the totality of what the Bible says about God. It is absolutely true that God is love, but the word love does not define the totality of who God is. So the Bible does speak about God with multiple attributes. For example, God is loving and just. God is merciful and holy. God is forgiving and righteous. But the problem is that those attributes cannot contradict within God because if attributes of God contradict, then God is in a battle with God's self. You see this in actually pagan religion. So in first century Rome, there was a god named Janus, and what Janus had was two faces, one facing this way and one facing that way, and this resembles the contradictory wills within God, one of love and one of hate. So a god who is both love and hate is not the god seen in Jesus Christ, but the god seen in pagan religions. To the second point, that there are some people who want to elevate certain attributes of God over other attributes of God is absolutely true as well. And one of the people who does this in Christian history is actually Jesus himself. In the Sermon on the Mount, which is Jesus' ultimate teachings on what it means to follow him, he has this to say, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. 
But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons and daughters of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you go doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Here Jesus elevates love above everything else and says that if you want to reflect God, that is, if you want to become sons and daughters of Jesus' Abba, Jesus' Father, then love your enemies. What does this mean? This means that if you want to be perfect as God is perfect, then love even your enemies. There's nothing in the message of Jesus that you should hate people. Jesus elevates love above everything else, and it even embraces those who are the enemies of God. What I like about Driscoll is his urgency. We need that kind of urgency, but we need that kind of urgency in an, in an all-inclusive love, the all-inclusive love that Jesus showed his followers and taught his followers to give to everyone, even our enemies. There is no room for hate in the Christian life or even in God, because God is love.